Hey guys, welcome to the video. So today's video is going to be all about computers. So in this day and age, everyone's got a computer. We live in a world of technology and we're all big users of it, uh, but I think a lot of us don't understand what's actually going on behind the scenes. So in this video, I'm going to show you some pretty basic, uh, simple computer hacks that I find actually pretty cool, um, but also that you should definitely be aware of. Not just to know how to do, but also so you don't fall victim to any of these hacks. Um, so it's as much for your safety as it is some cool computer spy hacks. So I consider myself pretty tech savvy, but I'm no like computer wizard genius by any means. I just basically found this stuff by trial and error and also just research. All right, let's get into this. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how you can actually get into someone's computer, um, specifically Mac, because that's what I'm using right now, uh, without their passcode. So say I lock this and uh, now I have to enter a passcode. Don't know what it is, right? Well, in a previous video, I showed you guys how to bypass it. So here's a quick recap of that video right now. This trick is actually very simple to do, and uh, it doesn't take any real hacking skills, but it looks super awesome when you do it. And uh, yeah, you can impress a lot of people. But please don't use this trick to do anything deceitful or hurt anyone. I'm just showing this to you guys because I think it's a really cool spy trick. And you could use this trick, like say if you have like a friend or a group of people, you could bet one of them that you could hack into their computer. They'll be like, no way, and then you'll do it and you can make some money that way. So yeah, let's get into this. As you can see, this computer is password protected. I don't know the Apple ID and have no way of recovering it. So the first thing you want to do is power down the computer. Next, you want to power it on the computer and hold down the Command S key. All right, now we're booted into single user mode. And from here, we can enter the codes to hack the computer. All right, so the first thing you want to type is M-O-U-N-T space minus UW space slash. So mount space minus UW space slash. And remember to add all the spaces or else it won't work. Uh, I'll put all the codes that you need to enter in the description as well. And then hit return. The next code you need to type is RM space slash VAR slash DB slash dot Apple setup done. And then hit return. And now we can type the code to shut down the computer. And that is shut down space minus H space now. And now we can go ahead and turn back on our computer. And now it will prompt us to create a new account. Um, so what we just did was actually to create a new admin account. And now we can use this admin account to actually change the password of the other admin account. So now we just have to go through the whole setup process. Uh, you can just basically skip everything because we're going to delete this account anyway. And we can just add whatever information we want. So I'm just going to make this test. Account name test. Uh, new password. I'm going to just do JLaser video. And now it's setting up our Mac. And boom, we're in. And if we go ahead and go to system preferences and user and accounts, you can see our test account is actually an admin. So we can go ahead and click the unlock button and just type in the password, which is jlaservideo. And there we go, it's unlocked. So now we can go ahead and go to this admin, click the reset password button, change password, and there we go. We just changed the password of this account. So now we can go ahead. So now we can go ahead and log out of this account. Log out. And we can log into the main account. And using the password J Laser Video, we can hit return. And there we go, we're in. As you can see, we are successfully logged into the main account. This is an admin account, and we can go ahead and unlock it using our new password. And then we can go ahead and actually delete this account. And there we go, the password's changed, but there is no trace we were ever here. And just like that, we're in their computer. So for the second thing I'm gonna show you is how to find someone's IP address online. So say you're talking to someone online and maybe they've been like harassing people or they took something of yours, or whatever the reason, uh, you wanna find out a little bit more about them. You can think of getting their IP as getting their home address. Um, this is public to everyone, but with this you can do a few certain things. So first, here's how to find someone's IP. So it's super simple to find out what your IP address is. All you have to do is go to Google and uh, type in what is my IP address, um, and it'll pop up. 
Uh, I'm going through a proxy currently, which changes your IP address, um, and I'll show you how to do that after to keep it private. Uh, but with this IP address, you can do a lot of stuff. Like for an instance, uh, you can search what is my IP address location, and it'll show you a map of your general area and location of uh, where it thinks your IP address is located. So it's actually a pretty simple process to get someone else's IP address. Um, there's actually several web services that provide this. So I'll drop a couple links in the descriptions to a few options, but uh, basically all you have to do is search um, IP logger like image, and it'll take you to a website that allows you to create a tiny image that you can store in like a text or an email or Facebook message, really anything like that. And as soon as the person goes ahead and opens it, uh, their IP address will be recorded and uh, saved and you can view it along with their location and uh, a few other things. So this is first one, uh, iplogger.org. All you have to do is click get logger code and uh, it'll give you some URLs that uh, if we copy and paste into the browser will redirect us to this tiny image right here. So you can actually just take this uh, image and uh, place it in an email or a Facebook message. But every time it's viewed, we can uh, go over here to logged IPs and uh, click the refresh button. And as you can see, my IP has been logged right here. And it gives you the time and the date and the city. All we'd have to do to find the location is copy that. Um, do IP address lookup, uh, paste in your IP address. And there you go, it gives us a general location about whereabouts uh, this IP address is probably coming from. Again, I'm using a proxy, so this is way off. But uh, if they weren't, like 99% of the people don't, um, this is how you could get their location. So another way you could do this is uh, with short URLs. This allows you to create redirecting URLs that will actually track their IP and log it. Say I want to make a redirecting URL that'll log whoever's IP um, clicks on this link. So create URL. So right here there's a Google URL and someone clicks on it. So I'm just going to paste it into the window and search it. It'll redirect us to the google.com and no one would know that their IP address has been logged. Hop back on over to the page and we have viewer access link. You can see that uh, my IP address has been logged right here. And yeah, just another way to log an IP. So now you see just how easy it is to actually log someone's IP. The good news is that with an IP, there's not a crazy amount that you can do right off the bat. Um, obviously you can find their general location area. And if someone like really tries to go after you, someone might be able to brute force attack your computer and try and hack it that way. Another thing they can do is take your IP put it through a port scanner and uh, try and get access to your computer that way kind of through a back door like obviously you don't have to worry about uh getting your ip hacked if you're just on like youtube or facebook or google or anything like that and you're talking to people you know just your basic web browsing you don't have to worry about getting your ip hacked but uh say you're on like a sketchy wi-fi network or just something that doesn't feel quite right um it's got like a weird url it's not a secure url maybe it can definitely be a good idea to hide your identity online the easiest of which is a free web proxy, so again I'll drop links to all these down in the description. It'll actually mask your IP address right in your web browser, so you have nothing to worry about. So this is a super simple method, even works if you're on a smartphone. Go through this uh, web link, and if we search what is my IP, you can see our address pops up. Um, and now it says we're in England. And uh, keep in mind, I've turned off my proxy, so this is the only thing masking my IP. And uh, as you can see, it does work. So one more way I wanna show you is actually through an application web browser. Um, it's called Tor. Some of you may have heard of it. This is another way to make sure your internet connection is secure and uh, safe and that no one's gonna take your identity. So once again, link in the description, and uh, when you open it up, it'll look something like this. Um, and first thing we wanna do, let's just search, what is my IP? So here we go, this is what it thinks our IP address is, it thinks we're in the Netherlands. Um, so yeah, as you can see, Tor works as well. Um, it's probably a little bit more secure than uh, just a simple web proxy. Um, so yeah, that's in the description if you want to go check it out and add some extra security. Alright guys, so this next trick allows you to view and control your computer directly from your smartphone. So the app I'm using to do this is called VNC Viewer. Um, it's right here, so once you have this downloaded on your phone, go ahead and download the computer side of it. So I'll drop things to this down in the description, and if you're just using it for home, it is 100% free, and uh, that's all we need for this. And then uh, create an account, and then you should be good. 
And then when you go ahead and open it up on your phone, you should see something like this with your computer name um, right there, once you've signed into both your computer and your desktop. So if we go ahead and click this, it'll launch. And um, you can actually set a password so not everyone can join um, who has the app. And now you're connected to your desktop from your phone. As you can see, I can see my desktop right here. I can scroll around. Um, I can zoom out, see the whole desktop. And as you can see on my computer, it's mirroring everything I do. Um, so I can actually go ahead and open stuff, um, open folders. And the optimization, I think, is actually very good. The whole screen is your trackpad and it basically just turns your phone into a mobile computer. So this could be useful for a number of ways. In the case of a spy device, all you'd have to do is uh, go to Spotlight. And if you swipe up, you can grab a keyboard. And, uh, you can type something like Photo Booth. You can launch the application. And as you can see, you can now view through the laptop camera um, right on your smartphone. So you can see, I'm waving my hand here. Um, you can see my camera that I'm filming with. Um, it's actually pretty trippy to look at. It's weird that there's a mushroom in the background. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, that's a cool way this can be used in terms of uh, spy devices. But honestly, this is actually just a really cool thing to have set up. So like if you leave your computer open, you can just hop on through your phone, um, get some work done. If you can't do whatever you need to do on a mobile device, like you can run applications, you can run programs, you can email files and uh, yeah, it's just really helpful to have. So yeah. All right, for this next trick, I'm gonna show you how to turn your computer into a motion activated spy surveillance camera. So once you click the link in the description, you wanna go ahead and open up the app iSentry. And if you have a camera connected to your computer, you'll immediately see yourself. So basically what this app does is you can have it in sleep mode and um, it'll still be running in the background, but basically whenever it detects motion in the camera, it'll start recording. So if we go to settings, um, we can just say, we can choose where to save it. We can have it play an alarm sound. If, so if you ever wanted to uh, scare anyone off, you could set this alarm and maybe hook it up to some giant speakers and definitely give someone a scare if they uh, walk in front of your computer. Um, so detection, you can set the sensitivity. Um, so as you can see, if I wave my hand, a lot of motion, but if I get really still, it goes down to green. And also one more thing, um, if you're on a Mac like me, you're also gonna have this little green light up here, and that's kind of an indication that the camera's on. So if you wanna fix this, all you gotta do is throw a little electrical tape over the green dot, just a little dot of it's fine. And so if I go ahead and click start, and um, as soon as I move, it'll start recording. So I'm gonna be still for a few seconds, shut off the computer monitor, and see if we can get it to activate. You can hear, I actually had the alarm on. You can hear the alarms playing, so it definitely, uh, so it definitely heard me, and um, yep, it's still playing. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and um, it just exported the video out to the desktop and we can go ahead and watch it. And um, this was all done with the computer screen being blank. Um, so you just leave your computer open, screen off, maybe plugged in, so you're not killing any battery. So this is a really cool, easy way of uh, putting a surveillance camera inside your room. All right, guys, well, that's about it for this video. Uh, as I said before, uh, if you did like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and drop your ideas down in the description if you have anything you want me to make in the future. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe as well if you would like to see new and the upcoming videos. That's all I've got for this one, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.